Hi, this is Nolan with postproduction.com, and I have Rebecca, um, and I'm trying to remember exactly, Rebecca, how do I pronounce your last name? Ha, <laughs> right? Say, just say love Rebecca. that, Rebecca. <laughs> love that. Do I have to do the, the little cup thing, too? No. <laughs> just, okay. I was inside, you know, off camera kind of thing. <laughs> off, off the side. Okay, well, we'll see if we can fix that in post. <laughs> Rebecca Michaels Ha. This is why, because of that very reason, I used Rebecca Michaels for a long time. Oh, okay. and, um, and then I brought back Ha because it was easier getting paid that way. Sure. <laughs> that's my legal <laughs> name. Rebecca Michaels is actually a stage name for me uh, because of the problem with Ha. Okay. Interesting. Trivia Just... to start off. <laughs> <laughs> trivia to start off the show. All right. Well, trivia, trivia noted. And, and I suppose that's not a bad thing adding in so you can actually get paid. You know, I'm sure you enjoy working for free, but, uh, you know, getting paid is always a little bit nice, too, isn't it? <laughs> is it? Yeah, well, the the bank wants to accept the check. They see my name, but they don't believe that it's me when it's Rebecca Michaels. So <laughs> I said, here I am. Really, I'm really here. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, all my invoices say Rebecca Ha for bank okay. purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so now I know you were telling me that you do a number of things: voiceover acting, acting, um, even teaching. What? Uh, how did you get your start into this? Well, it all started when I was a little child, like they all say. <laughs> but basically, I made a commitment to myself to go into a voiceover career in the year 2000. I'd been in corporate uh, America for uh, quite a few years, but I'd always been doing stuff on the side because I was part of marketing. You have creativity around you, and I was doing things, doing voicing commercials, and um, doing things on the side. I was hosting some shows locally. So I decided that I really wanted to leave because I couldn't take the what was called golden handcuffs oh. back then, um, which basically meant that I wanted to have a more creative life. And so I looked at the opportunities I had and I jumped into voiceover because that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want the stress of being on camera, <laughs> although I, I got into that. <laughs> I got into that too, but I love voiceover because of the fact that it's uh, it's really freeing for for a person as a as an actor. So I start from an actor's perspective. I don't start from a radio DJ perspective or radio host or other things that other people join or you know flow into voiceover um, from different places. So mine is coming from a business background who wanted more creativity and loved always doing voice and radio and that sort of thing. That was always part of my blood. So, so you know, you, you bring up a good point, and uh, that is that you start off in corporate America with the golden handcuffs, and I would expect that there's a lot of people out there that they've been told, hey, you've got a great voice, you should be doing something on radio or something on TV, movies, voiceover, and people go, wow, that sounds pretty cool, maybe I could work from home you know, do whatever, you know, all of that comes with. And But they're working, as you said, at their 9-to-5 job with the golden handcuffs. How did you make that transition from, you know, 9-to-5 to getting, you know, more 5-to-9 maybe? To being a freelance 100% 24-hour laborer, 24-hour yeah. <laughs> a day laborer. How did you um, make that transition? How did, how did that work? Well, I watched other people who had done it. You know, that's really what happened for me. I was asking people how they did it. Why weren't they going to a day job every morning? And I was finding out what people were doing. People had part-time jobs. You know, there were the traditional actors when I had gone to Los Angeles because I started in the San Francisco area. And I was just really asking people, how would you do it? And one guy told me, he goes, I planned for it. I saw an opportunity in my company, and I took... Um, a layoff package or whatever they call a severance package you know and in my company we had been going through a lot of mergers it was the cable industry and there were mergers and reorganizations and mergers and reorganizations and every time there was a reorganization because of the way that the mentality was to treat everybody fairly it's like almost everybody got fired but got rehired immediately and put into the new corporate structure Mm. on the levels that I was at. If you were really, really high up, like CEO or whatever, when there was a merger, you know, you were gone. If you weren't the merging, you know, company, if you were merged in, usually they took care of the, the highest on the list. But I was always, you know, in the middle level there. So I saw that happening one time, and it was um, after I had been purposefully studying voiceover at night school, let's call it, because it was a 
it was a school that offered nighttime classes and I had purposefully said I'm just going to study at night I'm going to you know I was basically also you know for those people who have lives you know I had just been going through a divorce so it made my life actually you know gave me focus because I was going through kind of a hard time but you know you do what you need to do and I focused on that and uh, I knew that there was a reorg coming and I took the package and they didn't want me to leave but I said I need to <laughs> and, um, and I left and it was hard and I worked part-time in really odd jobs and and uh, we were just talking about this on a LinkedIn group recently. It was like, what? How did you? You know, everybody was sharing their story, not just right. me. It was not about me. And um and I remembered what I had done. I mean, I was selling chocolates at grocery store, high end grocery stores, selling these really expensive German chocolates. German, oh. yes, uh, I forget the name brand, but they were really good. <laughs> and um, they were like seven bucks, like for a bar that was like you know twenty ounces. I don't know. It was really expensive. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I was driving around, you know, and then that was like killing me because I had to stock my car up, go to this place, take an unload, a reload, and then go back into my car, you know. It was fun, but it was hard work too, like labor and uh, lots of time on the road, and it just, you know, I found a better balance with a different kind of part-time job. So I jumped around for part-time jobs for a while and uh, until I could, you know, earn a full-time income. So let me ask you this real quick. Um, <clears throat> obviously, there's a lot of people who do maybe like uh, Fiverr gigs or Voice123, or they have all these different outlets where they can pick up a gig here or there. So and I'm kind of asking this from the perspective of, of that person who's working that 9 to 5 or doing a full-time normal job and they want to transition into uh, voiceover work. So would they be able to, it sounds like what you did is you were, you kind of had your job and you wanted to get out, you saw an opportunity, but along the way you were studying and sharpening your skills. Did you pick up some of those one-off type gigs here and there? I don't know if Voice123 or Fiverr was even around. I don't think back then when you no, started. No, no, they weren't around then. And it was really, I started at the end of the old paradigm when you would actually go into your agent's office and literally record there for a session that would then get submitted to whoever the end client was or decisioning decision making people um, and nobody was online really at the beginning of the 2000s um, that came around after 2005 and what was interesting for me is I really kind of got out of voiceover at the beginning I got an agent immediately but then I started booking all this on camera work Hmm. And so it really pulled me away. I had studied voiceover, I had studied acting, I had a demo and everything. Um, but I did headshots for the hell of it. <laughs> and then I started booking all these gigs. And I ended up going down that road because it was more exciting and I wanted to be a, a TV host for something. And I was getting a little older compared to what they were looking for at the time so it was really a struggle for me uh -huh. um, so I kind of decided you know really what I wanted was voiceover I took some time off and when I got back in it was 2008 oh, wow. uh, 2000, 2009 2009 I took a couple of years off like 2007 2008 and I got back in at 2009 and then then you see voice123 voices.com um, I think Voice Over Planet was around at that time, and things have changed even since then. But what I did is I used that as my practice practice area because mm -hmm. they can you can get inundated with auditions, right. and I let that serve me to get me back into having my actually to get me having my own studio because before I had always been traveling to mm -hmm. all the places. Oh sure. But at this point, I didn't have that luxury, nor did I really want to deal with that because that's. That's hard. That's hard on everything because you're spending a lot of money and you're not earning anything really driving around. Right. So paradigm shift, internet. I got back in using my own home studio. I had started one, but I hadn't really finished it before I left LA. So uh, basically, for those people who are currently in a work situation, you know, you have to figure it out. You have to figure out what your needs are. Everybody's family situation right. is different. Everybody's economic situation is different. And you have to look at what other people are doing. And like I did, you kind of ask people who seem to have figured it out and you try to see if you can apply that to yourself. And you try to make sure that you have strong business knowledge because 
part of it is I had gained a lot of business knowledge being in a corporate environment, in a marketing environment, and doing budgeting and being a manager and having people that I managed. So I had a lot of experience that I, with the golden handcuffs, had achieved that I didn't realize. I had a lot of training experience. I learned and I was taught how to be a facilitator and how to train other people, which also helps guide me when I want to help guide other people too. Sure. Um, so it really depends, but being a voiceover talent is not about whether you have a good voice. That can be a plus, wow. and, but it doesn't mean that you have a career, and that's a big, big kind of misnomer out there. So if somebody tells you you have a good voice and you think that that's the reason why you should become a voice talent, well, maybe it is, but you've got to do some research and you've got to figure out whether you have the interest that's really key. You have the passion and interest because that keeps me going all the time. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I've heard people say that, you know, do do something you'd be willing to do for free and then get good enough at it so that people would be willing to pay you for it. <laughs> so that's a way to look at it. And I think what's really important is that when you're doing things, even if you're doing things for free, you're doing them well and you're learning and you're assessing yourself as you go. You know what your skills are what your limited skills might be in the beginning. You know, well, I know this. You know, I know I have a good voice and I know I like carpentry. So I want to talk about or voice projects that are about carpentry. I'm just making up an example off the top of my head. Because what's important also is that when people get involved and they take on projects, that they take on projects that they are interested in so that their interest shows through. So when they don't have a really strong skill level yet with everything else in voiceover, that that will help them achieve something or at least learn a little bit more about whether they like it or not. Um, besides, before we jump to something else, I don't know Fiverr very well, but I had an old client ask me, why aren't you listed on Fiverr just yesterday? And I went on Fiverr, I thought, why am I not? Because it has a terrible reputation in the voiceover industry. Um, why? Because nobody wants to work for $5. And there are all ways around, all many ways around working for $5. You can say it's $5 for this, but then it's another 5 for this, that, and the other thing, and the other thing. And it becomes like this Chinese menu. You know where you go ch ch a la carte, everything, right? Uh -huh. So Fiverr isn't really, you know, for professionals. That's what I have to say, Sure. unfortunately. Would, do, um, would you see something like that um, <clears throat> being an opportunity for someone who just wants to get some practice, get their chops up a little bit, um, or is there are there better outlets than that, would you think? Well... I have my own personal opinion and everybody's going to have their own, right? <laughs> of course. Because I was looking on Fiverr and I thought, well, maybe that person is a professional, but then why would they be doing things for $5? Because you can't earn a living as far as I'm concerned unless you do one word for $5, maybe. I mean, right. I don't know what the real breakdown will be, but I saw people saying 750 words or an audiobook, an ebook for for $5. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. I mean... There's editing involved too, and I don't know if they're having to pay somebody else, or they're doing that, or they're just trying to start out and see if they can get work. Um, I think a better way is not to really go out there and put yourself on the market as much as really practicing and learning on your own, mm -hmm. because nowadays it's about having your own home studio. Like you can see, I'm in my own. That's why it's all dark back here because it doesn't really matter <laughs> that I have a lot of light. Right. Um, and sometimes I do Skype calls, so I do have my like face logo over here. My like, it's kind of off camera. There it is. I'm telling you, it's really there. And um, so you really need to have skills besides the voice technique and ability to know what you know proximity is to the mic and basics like that. You need to know how to edit the audio and clean up the audio. Know what people are expecting of you and know how to work with the levels of the audio, so it doesn't sound like it's you know a lot of problems that way right. plus you need to know how to market your business you have to understand marketing and being an entrepreneur and it's not something you just jump in and start doing necessarily but everybody has their own way you know right. I'm not like I'm not a huge planner like because that can turn into procrastination yeah <laughs> but at the same time a little planning is helpful but everybody has good instincts usually or they hopefully will listen to their own instincts because that will take you to some degree far, you know? Right. Um, 
I hope that answers the question because I don't even remember what you were asking. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, it's kind of funny as we as we uh, started, you know, the interview here, the conversation. Um, you know, you really brought some ideas to my mind that I know there's a ton of people out there. I mean, I know a bunch of people. They want to get into voiceover, and they're kind of like you when you said you were starting off. You had your nine to five job, and you know, currently they're kind of doing a little bit about what you were talking about. They're they're sharpening their skills, you know, after hours and on the weekends. Um, and then many of them that I know, they're you know picking up some gigs here and there. You know, the voice one, two, three. I haven't met anybody quite. I, I've seen people on Fiverr, but I haven't met anybody who actually does do that. But uh, um, but they're doing a lot of the stuff that you were saying. So it just dawned on me. I was like, wow, I bet you a lot of people would be curious to hear how it was that you went from being out of the industry getting into the industry. W was there one? I suppose it's probably a number of gigs that kind of you felt was the turning point to uh, going full-time and working 100% from your uh, studio in home. But is there a turning point in your career that you felt really, really set it off for you and w allowed you to walk away from doing the odd jobs and just go 100% full-time? Well, probably there are two turning points. One was when I first was getting started, very, very first. After that full year of training, um, maybe a little over a year, and I went and I got my demo done. and. Oh. Right after that, the woman who had been holding the school that I was going to, she was the casting director, and she did a casting and invited, you know, me as well as other people to the casting, and uh, I booked the job. And I remember when she called me, or I think she called me, um, and she said, "Well, you're on your way. You made it. You're in it now, right?" Wow. And, um that was really cool because she knew she had seen me the whole way through and this was my first audition that I attended from her and I booked the job wow. and uh, it was really exciting so it gives me chills remembering it now <laughs> Wow! Um, so that was really a key moment because you have to have a demo that's basically like having a business card as a professional talent right. and then and then nowadays, really, you need to audition because, uh, and I did audition at that point, um, uh, but you're always auditioning. Now, the, the demo is often mostly a tool to get an agent nowadays, um, and it was really kind of then, too. And I got an agent right away as well, so part of it is, you know, luck um, and timing. Um, and then the second kind of pivotal moment for me was going back in, um, and I had help in creating a home studio. I didn't do it on my own, which uh, I encourage everybody to, you know, if you know what you're good at, you know what you, you're not so good at, if you can get help with the things that you're not so good at, oh sure, get it and don't try to figure it out on your own because you might take a lot longer unless it's your procrastination technique, which is, you know, that's another story. Um, but yeah, I got help setting up my home studio, so that was kind of like huge. And uh, I basically used LinkedIn at the time. Remember, this was 2009, mm -hmm. and Twitter was sort of a question mark. It was starting, but people weren't really, you know, embracing it. And Facebook wasn't really in that scene yet. Right. So, um, so back then, I was really using my business skills and my networking skills online sure. to uh, generate contacts from which I I generated leads and referrals and then recurring work and huh. that's that's what it took and I focused on um, my knowledge my business background and my training background and my sales and marketing background as my strengths to start wow, wow. so when you say and mind you I do want to ask you about I know you have a, a I know there's an improv program yes. also your website. I do want to ask you about that. I, you know, in fact, maybe we'll this is a good segue. <laughs> yeah. We go to that. I want you to, you know, give all your your tips and tricks and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm just kind of I'm really intrigued by you know a lot of stuff that you said in regards to networking on LinkedIn. Like I know people right now um, that are looking to get into the voiceover world. They're like, well, shoot, I'd I'd love to get an agent. And I'd love to book reoccurring work. And they're like, where do I go from here? And obviously, I'm not the one to ask. You would be the one to ask. I, I would. I mean, that's why I'm asking you, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, everybody thinks that, I mean, everybody has some impressions, probably because of Hollywood movies, that the agent is the, the king, you know, in right. your life as a voice talent. And uh, it's not the truth anymore. Mm -hmm. Many people... Um, Unless you are really at the top level and you live in Los Angeles or New York and you have agents 
probably in both places, mm -hmm. um, you'll have multiple agents in various areas. And even now, there is a new agency kind of spawned from the internet um, that is called the voicerealm.com. Oh. And uh, I like them. They just started, oh gosh, maybe a year and a half to two years ago. I'm not sure exactly. Over a year ago, though. And uh, I was in with them in the beginning because I found their concept interesting. Right. But basically what they're about is being an online agency. So taking the traditional role of an agent but doing it from an online perspective. Um, so, the, so what's happening is from my perspective, from my position as a voice talent, an agent is very important but an agent is only going to get you know a portion of your business. They're only going to get 10 or 20 percent of what you book with them. Oh, wow. So if you look at that in your overall, you're only paying them 10 or 20 percent of uh, what you earn on a job. So if you think of that as your workload, then the majority of um, money comes to you, but the problem is the agencies need a lot of clients to be able to make money right. doing that. Right. And, the, and usually, um, even with me now, the agency's work coming to me um, is less than what I generate on my own. Right. And this is the case for a lot of people who are not in the major market itself mm -hmm. and are doing their own footwork, let's say, to right. um, market themselves and build their business. And you're basically a small business person uh, running your business and doing everything you can. So having an agent is great. Having multiple agents is better and more appropriate. Working the pay-to-plays, as they're called, the Voices123Voices.com. Right. Um, can be something you do, can be something you do to keep yourself from getting rusty in the beginning like I did and then you don't do it anymore. Can be something you do tangentially, you know, if you don't mind the investment of money to buy the membership that you need to buy for them. Right. Um, but networking on LinkedIn is a big, di big deal for me. I find it to be very, very um, professional there and uh, open pretty much for people to meet each other. Um, and then, uh, you know, online advertising and uh, Twitter. Uh, Facebook, I don't know. You know, Facebook keeps morphing into these different things. You know, I have right. a page on there for my voiceover business, but all that page stuff has changed. But I will tell you that if somebody is wondering about voiceover, to do your research is so key because so many people j jump into it thinking, I can do this. And, um, <laughs> And then they kind of get disillusioned after a year or two because there's there's a high level of competition. Even sure. though it's a very friendly community to the most part, um, it's highly competitive. And uh, when you start getting into the higher paying gigs, really competitive. Oh, sure. Um, so you have to be good and you have to be talented and you have to hone your skills. Skills right. are really important. And there are a lot of good coaches out there, and that was that was going to broach us over to the next. But well, yeah, I was just going to say, I want to I want to ask you one last question, and then let's talk about uh, what you do and how you're helping out. Sure. Um, you talked about networking on LinkedIn. Is that where you where you're, the passion of you know what you're passionate about? Are those the people that you're looking to network with in hopes of maybe doing some work with them, or is there any specific target of people that you network with on LinkedIn? Both. The potential producers or collaborators, I call them collaborators because they could be casting people, they right. could be producers, they could be developers of content that um, hire voiceover talent. Anybody who hires voiceover talent, sure, oh, that's one sure. of your targets. And another aspect of that, though, is is the voiceover community and, and building networking through that because mm -hmm. um, you can learn things. A lot of people are very open and share their trials and tribulations and successes. And to see all of that and be a part of that, I was extremely helped in the in, sure. the, in the beginnings of setting up my voiceover studio myself, you know, doing it from home, all that. Ooh, yeah, that was extremely helpful. Facebook right. is now a nice community as well. Lots of voiceover groups in both places. Uh -huh. um, and so it kind of depends, you know, which which is your cup of tea. I do both. Um, and then, yeah, and then there's Twitter. So all this, I, I don't do Instagram. I don't do, I have a thing. I don't do Stage 32. Um, oh, I meant pin, Pinterest, not Instagram. Um, uh -huh. So, but people do. You know, I just, um, 
I just haven't been big on that. And, you know, it really depends on your personality and your time and where you feel like you can make the most impact. So right. for me, it was one thing, you know, I have this business background, you know, maybe you're an uber creative gamer, you know, and you just <laughs> know you have the next voice of like some total, you know, Megatron transformer, I don't know. And, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe you're doing the anime fan dubs, you know. Well, cool, okay, but definitely check in and there are some really cool podcasts out there or internet radio shows you can check out that are awesome. Sure, you I have, have one, don't you? I have one. It's called lovethatvoiceover.com and uh -huh. I interview people um, pretty much once a month. Uh, I have over 58,000 downloads at this point. I've been wow. doing it since 2012. Um, and it's just audio, so you can take it with you. What's nice is you can listen to that, you know, while you're exercising or whatever. Sure. And uh, we have talent agents, casting directors, and voiceover talent as um, main, you know, guests. Well, let me uh, do this very real quick, cool. Rebecca. Why don't I pull up your website so people can take a look at that, and then maybe sure. you can give us a quick tour and tell us a little bit how you help uh, you know, with with voiceover and all of that. Sure. Are you pulling up my um, love that in Provo uh, I've got love that Rebecca dot com. Okay. Well, Rebecca's that's my website. main business website. Okay. That's my main business website, and there's a page on there or a tab that you can see that talks about I love that voiceover. This is me, um, and that's my about page, and that tells you a little bit about some of my clients and uh, my experience and I don't know how many people actually look at this page because the main page which which is the home page is where I have my demos and okay. that would be what everybody needs to have you need to have demos and you need to have at least a commercial demo um, and then you have to have a web page because so you want um, me to click on the the home button here sure okay and you can design everything the way you want. It's nice to have a brand. Um, when you're first starting out, you may not know what you want your brand to be. Um, right. And then you can evolve with that, you know. Uh, so you can see that I have my demos, and people can click that and listen. And that's really, really important. You can have a one-page website with just your demos. That's totally cool. That's totally all you absolutely need. You, you absolutely need that, and that's totally fine. Wow, and then that's um, what you promote to the people you meet on LinkedIn. Yes, yes, and oftentimes I'll be emailing people an MP3 of my oh, sure. demo. Too. Okay. Um, it depends what they want, you know, whether they want something that they can forward to somebody else in an MP3 format or whether they want links. So it really varies, and you want to have capability to do both. So having it online is a way to send links to right. the sounds, and then also having an MP3 version so that they can get it really easily forwarded to somebody else, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then really you can touch the love that voiceover tab because that's the uh, program I was telling you I do okay and it, it's pretty much a once a month interview show personalities and projects behind the microphone so we've had some really fun interviews of um, writers and developers as well as uh, talent and casting and just interviewed agent Jeffrey Umberger out of Atlanta right. yeah I was and, just listening uh, to that uh, the other day that was really really good it was really good, and that was only part one. So there's there's more. They usually come in snippets of one, two, or three <laughs> per person, because because uh, nobody wants to sit down for too long and listen to something for too long. Uh -huh. um, but you can do you know you can do a weekend binge of Love That Voiceover. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and then so I'm guessing that Love That Improv, um, and this actually probably as you just said would be a good snippet for a next interview <laughs> if you're open, um, but. Uh, do you want me to go over that and talk real quick about how you help people with with improv and the importance of voiceover improv, or what are your what are your thoughts on what yeah. you'd like them to see? Yeah. Okay. Well, really briefly, you can touch on that. I have to, I don't think I've fixed the. You'll have to touch another. You have to click to go to the new page because I've actually separated. It's a new website now. Okay. Um, love that improv vo is. A service I started last year, it wasn't a service I started, it was actually something I did because I wanted it and nobody else was doing it. Um, oh. I love improv and oh. I started with acting and uh, I actually kind of learned on the job by doing improv uh, through dinner theater and um, oh. what it is, if nobody's familiar with that, 
if anybody's not familiar, dinner theater is basically where you go and you're going to have a dinner, but you know that there's a show happening in front of you, right. and you're interactive with the guests. So as the actor performing, I pretend I'm a person that's related. It was a wedding thing, like Tony and Tina's wedding. Oh, sure. And then I did another one before that. I actually don't even remember the <laughs> title of it. Um, and basically what happens is you're you're having your own drama as the actor with all the characters and there's a storyline, but you improv and riff with the guests so that they feel like they're really part of your event, you know? Oh, sure. And it's really, really fun. Um, so it's it's a mix of improv and acting. Um, and it's all usually comedy. Um, why I started this is because I feel improv isn't necessarily comedy related. It's more about being free with coming up with new ideas and being creative. Really ab abandoning whatever walls you have up, stopping your creativity. And that's sometimes fear or sometimes it's just a lack of practice where you need uh -huh. muscles to have flexibility that you don't normally stretch. So I wanted a place where I could stretch these kinds of uh, muscles and ideas and there was nobody doing this. You can go and find improv workouts, you can find sketch comedy places, you can find places like the I, uh, IO, the Second City, the Groundlings, um, many others. There's one in San Francisco I went to called BATS, Bay Area Theater Sports. Um, you, but you have to go there. And what I wanted was something that I could do right from my home studio where I'm standing right now. Right. Partly to get the benefit of doing it where I work. Right. Oh, yeah, totally. Huge energy shift in that. Um, huge yeah. mental barrier shift because you don't freeze when you're used to not, you know, being flexible. You oh, don't yeah. freak out the same way. And improv, in the short definition of it, really helps you um, be much more flexible when you get direction that might be difficult in a live uh, scenario um, or you, where you have multiple people giving you different direction at the same time. <laughs> that so never helps, happens, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it helps you remain steady on your feet because wow. you're used to juggling things and you're comfortable with that. And it also helps you come up with new ideas. So let's say they say, give us that line who can participate. But we want it really not so much as a question as more like you know the answer already. So right. um, give us a couple of ways of that. So who can participate? Who can participate? Who can participate? So you're not inflecting up at the end. So you give them some different ways. And that was just a crazy little idea. I just had to give you an example. Sure. But sometimes you get scared when that happens live. And so what improv helps you do is practice these things and coming up with responses so that you're, you're not afraid. Okay, that's one thing. It's really getting rid of the fear and uh -huh. really abandoning the fear. Um, that's kind of a basic thing because most people who have been around for a while don't worry about that anymore. They're used right. to it to a degree. But what it does is it makes you practice that skill, which right. coming up with new ideas, coming up with a new character on the fly. This happens to uh, one of my friends a lot where he's doing a character and they say, you know, um, we need this other character. We realize we didn't cast it. So can you do, you know, a three-inch fly uh, that has a drinking problem? <laughs> <laughs> and so you'll go, F n what? Instead, you won't do that. You'll just well, go, hang oh, on a three-inch fly. That's <laughs> a drinking problem, Roman. <laughs> and so you come up with something. <laughs> For your take on a drunk three uh, fly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a three inch fly is kind of freaking big, actually. But that is gross. Wow. <laughs> but uh, but what happens is you embrace these new opportunities. You see it with a different perspective when you're practicing improv. Uh -huh. So for me, it's like going to the gym. It's which I should do more often. <laughs> It's like going to the gym and practicing the things that, you know, make you nervous or that you're not familiar with so that you become familiar in a professionally safe environment. You're dealing with things that professionals deal with, right. but you're not doing it in front of your client. Oh, and that's right. huge. Right. Oh, and sure. It's just, like, it's just like any other skill-based training or 
workouts. Um, this all started as workouts, and then okay. as I've been doing the workouts, more people have been saying, but I don't get how this really translates to voiceover. So we actually started this month, in June of 2014, because I don't okay. know when somebody might be watching this, that we're now offering actual classes for the first time. Right, so, so is that... Uh, that's what this is over here, right? You start off with maybe the, the mailing list and then it goes into ready to buy or click here. Well, here, yeah. Basically, the website is just trying to introduce you to the services that we're offering. And okay. I do request that people who are going to do anything with me, that they are working from a home studio because I don't want people who don't know what they're doing yet. That's for other people to teach them. Right. I'm not teaching people the basics of voiceover. I'm not teaching you about how to set up your home studio. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm looking right. at people who already know those basics. They are working from home, and they can work out, let's say, I call this a workout, um, from their home studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do it all on Skype. Um, we might eventually go with Google Hangouts, like we're using right now. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but basically... Um, we are offering different levels now because we have enough people that we have a separation where there's more of the beginner and then there's more of the intermediate and then we're going to have masters as well. Oh, wow. And, um, and basically what I really hope to have happen, I'm very excited about this, is to do a once a month improvitational. Oh, and wow. that would include celebrity guests. You know, maybe maybe a couple medium level celebrities the first time. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but uh, Or maybe, you know, just a fun, really cool, great improvisers that are well known on social media because a lot of my friends are, are you know, kind of out there and doing cool things. Uh -huh. and, uh, and they'll perform, you know, and do some improv voiceover improv. So you'll hear characters and you'll hear things done on the fly. We'll play games which are really really great for stretching you in different ways like for commercials you need different skills than narration, than uh, audiobooks, than um, characters in games or uh, characters in um, animation. Uh, they're slightly different, but there are some skill sets that are really helpful that you can gain with improv. Improv is not the end-all, be-all for everything. Right. It's just a great place to stretch uh, muscles that you may not know you have, uh, sure. find them. <laughs> uh, it's not always about creating comedy either. That's really important because a lot of people think of Whose Line Is It Anyway, the TV show that was right. fabulously um, accepted and popular for improv. But that's a really kind of the sketch comedy improv. We're not looking at trying to make comedic routines, although there's a lot of funny things that happen when you do improv. Um, it's also about learning new aspects of a character, which may or may not be funny, but they'll be relevant for you when you're creating that uh, character for a part. So right. um, there's a lot of acting-based things that go on in improv that's really helpful for all of your skill sets as a voice actor. And it's really critical to do it in the space where you work so that we, because we can, um, right. oh, yeah. so that you create the positivity and you, you don't, and you, and you, generate this the the familiarity with it right where you work um, and and a lot of people give me a lot of positive positive po a lot of participants have given me a lot of positive positive feedback so we you know I got some really cool people working with me now and uh, Faith Coons John Bailey uh, you know come from different backgrounds both with great improv experience themselves and sure. able to offer some really great tips and instruction and we're all doing this together and oh. I'm really excited and I'm, I'm having a blast too and I have noticed with my own self how much better I'm performing and able to respond to different client requests because of my knowledge and my doing it regularly I just sure. started this last summer Oh, wow. 2013. Uh -huh. And uh, it was because, like I said, nobody else was offering this. And I'm sure I will get competition. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, what do they say? Uh, competition is the best form of flattery, right? <laughs> so, um, but really, improv is fantastic for being quick on your feet at the mic, um, for helping you offer options to your clients sure. or in your audition. Oh, Man, yeah. sometimes, you know, you have this three-word or 
two sentence audition and you're like wow you know they want friendly conversational but how many ways can you do that because you can have all kind of attitude with friendly and conversational and so we practice that sort of thing you know you've got two sentences and it's friendly and conversational give me three different ways to do that now Rebecca is this something that's that's kind of like an individual one-on-one -on -one, or is it like a group environment oh, that's um, cool um no it's group it's group um we try to keep it to a reasonable group. Um, sometimes they're smaller groups, so sometimes it feels like one-on-one -on -one because uh -huh. like a, a bunch of people have signed up, but then they all get gigs or whatever. So because we do this, the classes are now on the weekend, but the workouts have always been during the week. So um, so sometimes people have to you know go to their voice, do their voiceover gig, you know. So right. it varies. Right. Sometimes it feels like you know three people in the workout it's really intense because we can really get into some things sure. um, there are one-on-ones possible but we don't have it set up that way right now that's just on the side so it's kind of a uh, nights and weekends or is it during the day no 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 it's daytime on the weekdays oh nice daytime okay on the weekday. we have one evening in on Wednesday and then we have a Tuesday that's um that's during the day definitely during the day um, wow. yeah so. Well, that's definitely really cool. So then I guess the uh, the closing thought would be for somebody who is looking to maybe maybe they're getting some work already. You know, obviously, like you said, they're not the beginner person. They probably have their in-home in studio set up. They're already probably doing a little bit of work um, or maybe they're doing a lot of bit of work. It could be, it sounds like it's sort of like for the intermediate to advanced expert uh, type individuals, exactly what your platform is uh, geared for. And yes, the best sir. Way that's the best right. way for them to get in touch with you or, or to be a part of that would be just to go to Love That Improv uh, VO. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit so it gets out of the, the Google screen there. Oops, or maybe we can't see. I guess it's locked love in. Love That yeah. Improv VO, yeah. Okay, so love, love That Improv VO. No space is all one word. Like it says on the screen. Yeah, right. <laughs> love That right, Improv yeah. VO. Right, right. And okay. uh, if you screw it up, it'll probably redirect. I think I've got all the domains that I need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, or just look up Love That Improv VO or, you know, we used to call it Improvo, and so I still kind of say that sometimes because sure. it's, I used Impro because Keith Johnstone started, he's a famous guy for acting and improv, and uh, he started calling it Impro, and uh -huh. he did a lot of theater sports. So Improvio, Improvio, they all work. <laughs> all, links, all links lead to Rebecca. <laughs> I, I hope, that I hope so. Yo. <laughs> I'm aiming for that. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, Rebecca, it's, it's absolutely been a pleasure having you on the show here. And, uh, oh, well, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And... Um, yeah, definitely look forward to finding out more about what you're doing. And it sounds like, you know, what you got going on there is just is great. It uh, makes a heck of a lot of sense to me. If you're in the studio, why wouldn't you want to practice? As they say, like in basketball, I remember I tried to play basketball in high school, and they said practice uh, the way you want to play. So, and for the voiceover industry, you know, you're, you're playing in your home studio or more and more so. So that sounds like a great way to, to get sharp and, you know, get your, take yourself to the next level. Exactly, exactly. I might borrow that. Practice how you want to play. <laughs> yeah. So what's, what's uh, real quick, um, in parting, what, what cool gig do you got coming up? Anything in the works? Is something that's just super crazy, unbelievable that you don't even want to jinx by mentioning it? Or what's, what's cooking on your end? Well, I do have a couple of projects, but, you know, sometimes you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement uh, so you can't really yes. say some cool characters. There um, we go. Really exciting stuff. I wish I could describe it to you. I cannot. Yeah, um, okay. I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. Um, and then, you know, all the basic stuff. I do a lot of narration. Not for television yet. That would be lovely. I would love to do uh, some National Geographic stuff or whatever. Sure. But um, I would love to talk about lions and tigers and bears. <laughs> I really oh, no. would. Oh, <laughs> exactly. I think I need to do kids' stories on TV. I don't know. I always want to make them giggle and laugh. Um, but I do a lot of uh, smaller video narration stuff and uh, commercials every once in a while. Um, yeah, so I'm just, you know, working like everybody else. Yeah, well, I was looking at your accolades on your website there, and you pretty much got it nailed from A to Z and everything in between, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm very pleased to be a full-time, you know, 
uh, earning a decent living, you know, a uh, voice actor. And, uh, you know, that's not the easily, easily achievable feat uh, from what I've been told. So uh, <laughs> I just, I'm a hard worker. So I guess it's paying off. Yeah. <laughs> Thank well, you. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Rebecca, again, thanks again for stopping by the show. We're really glad to have you on and absolutely look forward to following you and see what you, you know, are doing down the line when you, after you do it, so you don't have to be bound by your non-disclosure and all that good stuff. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, again, Thank thanks. You. We'd love to have you on the show again. My pleasure. Cool. Thank you. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will talk to you, talk with you soon. Sounds great. Ciao. Yep. <laughs>